What is going on college basketball fans? Today we got another transfer portal video for you guys and we got some commitments to discuss and we also got six more players that are still available in the portal. We're going to talk about those players. They're all key contributors to whichever team they are going to get on, if not star players. And we're also going to talk about which teams are the favorites to land each one of these players. So I'm ready to get started. I just want to say subscribe if you guys are new. We've got to do a ton of college basketball content here on the channel. We're going to have a ton more transfer portal videos just like this one coming up for you guys here as well. So subscribe, hit that like button. Let's get started. Okay, so first... Real quick, let's go over some of these commitments. So Kansas, this did happen like a week or two ago, but Zeke Mayo out of South Dakota State and Riley Krugel out of Florida, two very, very talented guards committed to Kansas. That's right, Kansas, Bill Self. Bill Self did say after he did lose in the tournament, he two Gonzaga in the second round, he was like, yeah, he's been thinking about next season already for quite some time now. So don't know if that's necessarily a good look because, you know, you want to focus on the team you had now because he was a four seed. It's not like he was necessarily a bad team, but that that seems to be true considering he already got two key pickups for his team next year. Zeke Mayo out of South Dakota State and Riley Krugel out of Florida. Also, West Virginia did get Tucker DeVries. Uh, I'm sure we all knew that was going to happen. As soon as they um, announced that they hired Darren DeVries, the head coach of Drake, his son was going to transfer there as well. And, and these other Drake players that um, ate, ate and right and, and a few other Drake players as well, they are in the portal. WVU is in the mix on them. So those are not any of the players that we are discussing as far as players that are available in this video, but they are available. WVU is in the discussion because they might follow their head coach. UCLA. UCLA did pick up Kobe Johnson. He transferred from USC, staying in the uh, Los Angeles area and going over to UCLA now. So Kobe Johnson, that is a big pickup there for the Bruins and Memphis, as predicted in my last transfer portal video, PJ Haggerty is heading to play for Penny Hardaway and the Memphis Tigers. So that is a big pickup for them. PJ Haggerty was a redshirt freshman that averaged almost 20, no, he averaged over 20 points per game last year. Super solid player from Tulsa transferred over there to Memphis. Kansas State, another player that I talked about in my last transfer portal video, I predicted to him to go to Kansas State, and what do you know, he is on Kansas State. Um, another one of those shorter guards, like a 5'11 guard that is a scorer, going over to play for Jerome Tang. First it was Marquise Noel. He had an amazing run. It was Tyler Perry last year. They got him out of the portal. This time it is Doug McDaniel, the transfer from Michigan. Maryland, Maryland got a big pickup and Maryland's, you know, they're building a little bit of a team now. They got a five-star recruit coming in this year. They got Jacoby Gillespie transfer from Belmont, a 20 point per game scorer heading over to play for the Terps. And they're on, they're in the mix for a couple other guys here as well in the transfer portal. So look out for the Terps. They're trying to make some noise there in the big 10. And finally, our last one that I am going to announce here is Mississippi State, Mississippi State. With bringing back Josh Hubbard this year, they got another guard in the portal, and that is Kanye Clary out of Penn State. A huge pickup that is going to be an awesome, awesome backcourt of Kanye Clary and Josh Hubbard next season. Mississippi State is going to be super good next year. Now let's get into my six new players that are available in the portal and which teams they could potentially be going to these are in no real particular order but why not rank them i have six players for you guys coming in here at number six i do have frankie fielder he is a transfer out of omaha and he did average 20 points per game last year six rebounds a game and two assists per game he is a forward and he has cut down his list to his final four teams he these are official he is going to commit to one of these teams and that is nebraska creighton you know, no surprise there. Staying in state, he did go to Omaha. Um, Creighton is in Omaha. Nebraska's right there next door at Lincoln in the same state. And then Wisconsin and Michigan State are in the run as well. Now, out of these four teams, if I were to make my prediction, and that is what I'm going to do for each one of these six players, I'm going to make my official prediction as to which team I think they are going to go to. I think he is going to go to Nebraska. I think it would be a good fit for Frankie Fielder. I think that 
with the season they had last season, uh, made the NCAA tournament first time in a while. You know, they got an NCAA, no, they didn't get an NCAA tournament win, actually. So they actually are still looking for an NCAA tournament win. I think Nebraska would be a key place for him. I think he is going to stay in state. He might be Nebraska. He could go to Creighton, but I think he's going to stay in state and go to one of those schools. My official prediction for Frankie Fielder, super fun player to watch. I think he's going to be a Husker next season. Coming in here at number five, I do have a transfer out of Furman, and that is J.P. Pegs. I think he's pronounced it Pegs. I might be pronouncing his last name wrong, but he is a stud either way. 18 points per game, four rebounds a game, and five assists per game. And he, I'm not going to lie, it's between two teams. He has visited with two teams, or he is planning to visit two teams, and that is Auburn and Florida. So he is going to be playing in the SEC. He's either going to be a Tiger or he's going to be a Gator. And this is another. This is a guard here that would make a huge, huge difference on either one of these teams. If I had to make a prediction, I think that he is going to head and play for Bruce Pearl and the Auburn Tigers next year. That would be my prediction here for J.P. Peggs. Next up, coming in here at number four, we do have Big O. Flad Golden, the transfer out of Florida Atlantic University. And, you know, a lot of people, players out of FAU have transferred out already. We got another one coming up in this list as well out of FAU. One that we're not going to mention, Elijah Mitchell. Elijah Mitchell actually entered the portal today. Another solid player. But Vlad Golden has sparked interest. And not only a lot of teams, but a lot of big-time programs. Averaging 15 points per game last year and 7 rebounds a game last year. He was a stud. And, of course, Michigan is going to be on his list because, you know, that is where Dusty May did leave FAU to go coach Michigan. He could 100% go ahead and follow his coach. Another team that I found super interesting that has contacted, I have seen reported contacted, Vlad Golden is actually still alive in the NCAA tournament. They will be playing in the championship game on Monday the Yukon Huskies. And that is very interesting to me because Donovan Klingon is a stud, but he is going to go to the NBA draft this year. 100%. He is going to go first round. There is no reason he should not enter the NBA draft. Now, they're going to have a spot there at center. I feel like Vlad Golden would be awesome to plug right in there for Dan Hurley. So I found that interesting that they contacted him. Other teams that are interested, there are a ton, but I narrowed it down to three more. Michigan State, Marquette, and North Carolina. All three do have interest in Vlad Golden. I'm going to narrow it down to two for you guys. UConn, because I think Dan Hurley is going to go after a center. Right now, Vlad Golden might be the best center in the portal. I think UConn and I think Michigan are his top two right now if I were to guess Michigan just because he could follow his coach up there like I mentioned earlier if I had to make an official prediction I'm going to say that he does go to UConn and is the new center for the Huskies next season next up coming in here at number three we have a transfer from a guy who really made a name for himself here in the NCAA tournament and that is a transfer out of Oakland and that is not Jack Golke it is Trey Townsend, who did not get enough credit. I mean, a lot of people talk about Golke because he was shooting crazy, but the real reason Oakland won that game against Kentucky and he was going off against NC State as well was because of this guy, Trey Townsend. He averaged 17 points per game, eight rebounds a game, and three assists per game. I mean, such a stud for being an undersized big. The way he can score down and rebound down low, like his positioning is amazing so Trey Townsend a stud I think he's going to be playing power six basketball next year and I think he's staying in state it's looking like Michigan and Michigan State are both showing interest on Trey Townsend and he has also left an option out there open to returning to Oakland so I would say those are his final three teams I think he's going to stay in the state of Michigan either at Oakland Michigan State or Michigan and if I had to make a prediction I think he might go and play for the Spartans 
next year in East Lansing. That is going to be my prediction. I could see it happening. He could go out of state, but the two main teams I'm seeing show interest in him are, are Michigan and Michigan State. I think Tom Izzo can close the deal on him. I think it would be an amazing pickup for them. Trey Townsend, Sparty on. Next up, coming in here at number two, we have a transfer from Utah State, and that is the Mountain West Player of the Year this year. I don't know how it was, wasn't was Jaden Ledee, but it, it was this guy, great Osabor, out of Utah State. Averaged 17 points per game, 9 rebounds a game, and 3 assists per game. And yeah, he has a very close relationship with new head coach of the Washington Huskies, and that is Danny Sprinkle. So definitely a connection there, which leads me to believe he could be a Washington Husky Next season, I'm going to go ahead and let you guys know that is my prediction for where I think Great Osabor is going to transfer to this season is the Washington Huskies. I think he is going to go play for Coach Danny Sprinkle once again and leave Utah State. But other teams, I, I'm seeing a lot of people have interest in him. Um, Louisville is definitely up there. Louisville has been in contact with almost anybody that enters the portal. I mean, I think Pat Kelsey was actually a fantastic hire and an underrated hire. I know it's not the number one guy that they wanted, but I think it was the right choice for them. Um, Louisville was going heavy on a ton of people in the portal. They were going heavy on great Osabor. Iowa State, Iowa State fans seem to really want him on the squad. I'm not sure how much of a chance they have at getting him, but I have seen a lot of Iowa State fans really wanting great Osabor on the squad. And same with guy. Texas Tech as well so everybody if you're a fan of a team in college basketball you should want this guy on your team I think Washington are the favorites with maybe Louisville as a second but there's a huge distance between first and second I think Washington are the front runners and finally coming in here at number one I did mention earlier we do have a second player from FAU to talk about and that is the guard John L. Davis now John L. Davis stud point guard but he could he's a combo guard man you could play him at shooting guard as well so if your team does have a point guard get him anyway he can play off the ball he can play shooting guard 110 percent last year at fau he really had a breakout year i mean he was a beast like lat the season prior the year they made the final four he wasn't like anything crazy but whenever we got to March Madness, he was really turned up in the tournament. And he was really one of the main reasons they were in the Final Four. And this year, that coming off of that, he took a big step up. He averaged 18 points per game, 6 rebounds per game as a guard, and 3 assists per game. And it's looking like there's a clear 2. And that is the Michigan Wolverines. Like I said, he could follow his head coach in Dusty May and head up there. But Louisville is in that race. Once again, we are talking about Louisville going after a, another transfer. And I think that they could get him. I mean, it's definitely a possibility. If anyone's going to pull him away from Dusty May, I think it is going to be Louisville. So this would be my top two, Michigan and Louisville, with a very outside chance of Indiana trying to make some noise on John L. Davis. I, I think John L. Davis is actually from Indiana, if I'm not mis mistaken. So if he wants to, you know, return closer to home, Louisville could, or I mean, Indiana could be that. But I think it is between Michigan and Louisville. And I am going to predict that he is a Michigan Wolverine next season. So that is going to do it for my transfer portal update. Let me know what you guys think about these players, where you guys think they're going to go. Um, I think all six of these players are going to have a huge impact on their team, if not become be like huge stars on these teams. So let me know what you guys think. We're going to have a ton more transfer portal updates here on the channel with big time commitments, um, big time entries into the portal and yeah, good stuff coming guys. So make sure you guys subscribe and yeah guys, thank you so much for watching.